Morning all, the Reykjavik Open is finishing today, it's round 10 today and the pairings are up, very interesting pairings um, and uh, yesterday in round 9 there was a very interesting game uh, Wesley So playing white against Marcin Dezubi at Grandmaster 2602, Wesley So is 2684 for those of you who don't know, Wesley So um, has a fantastic following actually on chess games.com He's from the Philippines, a child uh, chess prodigy. Um, he was the eighth youngest grandmaster in history, actually, after achieving the GM title at the age of 14, one month and 28 days. Uh, it might be the ninth now, actually, uh, because there's someone else uh, from this Reykjavik Open, actually, who's also hit that. And we'll discuss that in another video soon. Uh, but anyway, this made him the youngest um, GM in the world at the time. In the Philippines, he's the youngest ever international master, the youngest ever grandmaster, and the youngest ever national champion. So, anyway, he was playing white against Marcin Dezuba, 2602. Let's have a look at that game. So, uh, e4 from Wesley, and we saw the Korokan, a solid choice from Marcin. d4, d5, and we saw e5. This is getting very popular, this advanced variation against the French defence. It was used actually by the chess game com uh, team against Akobian, Grandmaster Veruzen Akobian in a consultation game uh, recently and the world team managed to win with this. It seems to be a very interesting system. I think it was Nigel Short that first started using this with great effect with the idea of Bishop E2, not, not uh, challenging this bishop, trying to use this spatial advantage, this cramp on the black position to great effect. Black has difficulty sometimes developing pieces naturally, although in principle it looks as though it could have uh, properties of the French defence with the bishop outside of the pawn chain, but in practice there are some other issues to face. So development on the king's side for example, we see knight e7 after castling c5, so it's got that kind of French defence look to it, but actually white doesn't have to play c3 here. Uh, White actually plays c4, which is much uh, more aggressive in some respects. Okay, black plays knight bc6, and we see knight a3, supporting that c4 pawn. And actually, black decided to take it anyway, even allowing this knight to come to, to c4. He's perhaps thinking that this d5 score is quite juicy from black's perspective, and he uses it now, knight d5. We see bishop g5. And here a natural bishop e7 might fail miserably to knight d6 check, so black has to be careful. He plays actually queen d7. Now we see rook c1. Black plays h6, trying to evict this bishop. Bishop e3. Now Marcin plays b5. Quite committal, his queen side might be a little bit fragile at the moment. The knight goes to a3 and he has to protect b5, which he does. Now d takes c5, does seem to be winning a pawn and it's up to black to try and win this pawn back. So how will black try and win this pawn? It seems, is it a little bit naughty for white to try and win this or is it safe enough? The problem with taking it like this is that the e5 pawn is a bit more vulnerable and black's next move focuses in on that issue, bishop e4, that perhaps now bishop f3 and knight e5 will be on the card soon. Wesley plays knight c2 here, celebrating perhaps that d4 square, but also knight c2 means perhaps uh, soon <clears throat> b4 might be an idea as well. It, actually, it doesn't look at all possible at the moment, though, but maybe, so more, more importantly, perhaps, is the d4 square, and also, of course, protecting the bishop. If black wants to play knight takes e3, and in fact, that's the game continuation, knight takes e3 knight takes e3, so the knight from here to here is, seems like a very very good idea. Bishop e7, and then we see a4, trying to unmind black on the queen side again, black protects b5 like this, and we see knight d2, which, okay, this walks into a pin with rook d8. Did Wesley have to do this? Maybe we should check this out in the second pass, but what happens now is very very interesting indeed. He takes on b5, slightly loosening that b5 pawn. 
Now, still with his extra pawn, uh, but Black's you know going to play knight takes e5 pretty soon. Uh, Wesley changes the nature of the position. He does a queen sack with knight takes e4. So taking a bishop and taking a rook with this queen sack. And now, okay, that pawn is loose, but what about this pawn? We see knight takes e5 and c6. This is a dangerous c pawn as well that Wesley has got in return. So it's uh, looking a little difficult for black. If black technically has a material advantage here, it's negated by this powerful passed pawn, surely, and the rook and bishop. And if you look at white's pieces, they seem to be very powerfully centralized and very neatly arranged as a team here. And in fact, b5 seems to be immediately dropping off, giving white potentially two passed pawns. How, how does black actually defend b5 here? He can't. He lets it go. So there's two connected passed pawns. So in principle, if, if white can get these up the board, this would be really dangerous for black. Black castles, knight c4, is played here. If that, that knight's like the centerpiece of black position holding up the d7 square, if white can gain access to d7, then this pawn can be liberated further towards queening. Bishop d8. And we see actually knight c5 here. So no rush to take on e5 even. Black takes on c4, and in fact the queen now goes to e5 voluntarily. Maybe to set up this blockade, hitting h2 as well soon. Also, of course, b2. White wants to perhaps keep these connected past pawns, potentially rook c2. We see bishop c7 hitting h2. That's protected. g3, giving space for the king as well. Rook b8, bishop a4, and actually uh, there's a there's a threat here of knight d7 uh, potentially as well. Uh, in in this in this position here, uh, knight d7 may be answerable with, for example, queen uh, e4 attacking this one or actually queen h5 that's definitely something for the second pass uh, knight d7 or in fact even more simple queen takes b5 pardon me queen takes b5 looks clear enough okay so bishop a4 so now maybe knight d7 is, is perhaps more effective here as a threat rook a8 but the bishop's protected on a4 so why just plays b4 and these past pawns look quite dangerous, but the dark square blockade is that holding up for black? Queen f5, rook dc1, protecting that rook again. Black was threatening perhaps rook takes a4 and queen c2 there, it had to be protected, but it's behind this pawn which wants to be liberated. h5, and this looks quite dangerous to install a pawn here, but in the meantime, can this pawn be liberated? Bishop b5 does seem to support not only defense of the king but also that a6 square for, for say knight a6. Bishop b6, eyeing f2, potentially bishop f1, h4, now knight d7. This blockade is getting very tricky now. If bishop c7, then the pawns surely roll forward with b5 protected by the bishop and then b6 protected by the knight. It's starting to look really dangerous for Black, even though he's got the Queen. This 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 Queen sack seems to be working out well. Now c7 is a menace. Rook c8 blockading. Rook d2, and now this is getting really critical for Black. We see hg hg, not bothering installing a pawn on h3. Bishop covers g2. Queen g5. And now a very, very nice forcing sequence here from Wesley. He plays rook takes d4, allowing queen takes c1. And now guess what? If I give you 10 seconds here, what would you play as white in this position? Okay, knight f6 check for a quick rook d8 to try and get rid of the c8 rook. 
So King F8 is played. And it still, of course, allows this Rook D8 check. And after King E7, can you spot what White plays here? If I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Clue. It ends the game immediately, actually, this next move. Forget about the past pawn. I hope you've seen it. Knight G8, checkmate. And with this win, congratulations to Wesley So on the 2700chess.com site, the live rating list. At the moment, Wesley So is above 2700. I'm not sure he's ever done that before. 2701.4. So congratulations to Wesley for hitting rank 51 in the world on the live rating list at the moment with this win. So it was a winning star with this queen sacrifice, which was very dangerous for black. Let's have a look at it in more detail now in the second pass. So e4, and we saw the advanced variation of the Karakam. Very popular line now. Let's go here and see how popular c4 is. C4 is very popular here, 83 games. D4 takes C5, less popular. So C4 is the most popular move. Karakin, Alexia, Gelfand, with have all played C4 here. Uh, so let's continue. Knight BC6. Knight A3? Is that slightly unusual? They're all about the same here. D4 takes C5, 17 games. Knight, one, knight B1, C3, 16. A3, 16. So about the same. Black taking on C4. Seems the most standard. Actually, knight takes c4, knight d5. Seems a logical follow up. Bishop g5 seems the most popular move here. Black has to avoid bishop e7, and the most popular move is queen d7 as the game continuation. Okay, and um, rook c1. This has all been seen before, actually h6, four games with h6 here before. Uh, so Bolligan, Ehrenberg in 2003, white won that. Ramish against Prakash in 2008, white won that, and there were three draws. So good line overall for white, two wins, three draws here. So let's continue. Bishop e3, okay. Again, this this even though the engine doesn't like it, this has got good results. It's still the the five uh, stem games. Yeah, actually, four. I think one's a duplicate. Shapiranov game. So we see b5. Knight going back to a3. a6. And there's two stem games: Ramish against Prakash and Shapiranov against Bolligan, which was a draw. The Ramish game two four seven three against Prakash. Um, some low rated players, 2473 versus 2341, was a win for white in this line. So D takes C4, and in that game, uh, there's Rook AD8 or Bishop E7, actually, as the two stem game choices. So I think we've gone onto a new road now with Bishop E4. So white has a slight edge here. He plays knight c2, okay, and how can black easily get back his pawn? That's the question. So let's, let's say black did take on f3. I don't think this kind of works somehow. Bishop takes d5, queen takes knight b4 is unpleasant, I think, for black. That's fairly unpleasant, even though black's... Uh, got his three, four, five, six, three, four, five. Black's def definitely got his pawn back, but it's unpleasant. A lot of pressure. So, Black doesn't want to do that. He plays bishop e7. And we see a4, queen c, queen b7. So, White's well, got a slight edge. This idea, where where else could the queen have moved without doing a queen sack here? Uh, let's let's for example say queen b3 was played. Uh, then apparently it's it's about equal this kind of thing. 
e5 is a bit of a target it's a bit of a nothing game maybe after that not as interesting at all as the game continuation uh, so this game continuation very committal uh, the way it was played so taking and now this move which the engine does like a little bit knight takes e4 at this depth knight takes e4 giving up the queen so bishop and rook is is, is obtained as well as dangerous um, c pawn uh, black must do something surely about the uh, d6 square being supported by both pawns or not so, I know black here the engine is recommending actually castling and allowing an entrance into d6 so apparently this is just about a slight advantage for white uh, but um, maybe playable for black so b4 queen a3 uh, if that was taken I, I guess it's, it's starting to be dangerous for the c pawn c6 might not be as strong as knight takes b5 though so in the game we saw uh, knight takes e5 anyway not not castling taking out one of those pawns now c6 does give white a little bit more advantage than that other variation with castle so queen c7 bishop takes b5 apparently is a slight technical mistake at this depth knight c3 may have been more accurate taking on b5 after so what did this really allow Let's see knight c4 it does seem pleasant uh, for white black played bishop d8 which might not have been the best move okay more energetic f5 so this kind of continuation still it looks dangerous with that c pawn very dangerous actually it's been eliminated here okay so maybe not here if knight c3 here bishop d6 black has more of attacking prospects it seems than the game continuation okay so so in the game continuation uh, f5 wasn't played we maybe this is can be seen as a more passive move bishop d8 so knight c5 knight takes c4 Rook takes Queen e5. Still trying to get that battery, but without this f5, f4, it looks far less aggressive than what we've just seen. So g3, and white has the edge here technically. Rook b8. Bishop goes to a4 initially. Maybe bishop f1 is slightly better, but it, it heads to f1 later anyway. So b4. Okay, now after h5, the bishop does head for that f1 square. It's useful defensively on f1, as well as to support b5. So it goes back to f1 now. We see now knight d7. And here again, the engine thinks this is about equal disposition, but it looks pretty dangerous now after c7. Things are changing. Rook c8. Rook d2. Okay, black took on g3. And maybe uh, queen g5 is a blunder here. If bishop um, a7, does white have anything uh, particularly going on here? Maybe this blockade lasts quite a while now. Um, so in the game continuation it was very committed it allowed that forcing sequence queen g5 which is now look at that evaluation shift I think queen g5 can be identified uh, as a major blunder really because uh, it's taking the queen out of um, out of protecting f6 for rook d8 uh, in this continuation the queen's not protecting d8 so this looks like the blunder a major blunder so say, say bishop a7 had been played okay white still okay but um, there's no knockout blow here just yet in fact it's at this depth it's only a tiny tiny advantage so queen g5 this is a notable tactic really taking on d4 if if white had been tempted for anything else if he didn't 
spot this forcing sequence and play the more humble rook c d one, well actually queen g three threatens among other things. Uh, this this may be okay for black. Uh, so, uh, but even apparently e five might even be stronger. What would black be threatening after e five? Queen g three, queen g four. Okay, so this this knight's kind of bit of a problem here as well. So this was a fantastic move. Um, rook takes d four, giving up even more material for that pawn to be liberated. So knight f six check. King h8 even worse, rook d8 even more painful. Taking um, just rook d8 check and taking on c8 is still winning. Um, if we just have a quick look at that, uh, this position is is surely helpless for the queen because white's just got b5, b6. Surely, just b5. Will this blockade stand up? I wouldn't have thought so. Um, Thought so, <laughs> Wesley. So, so b6 here, and now takes. There's rook g8. In any case, so white would be a bishop up here, by you know forcing that queen if, if needed. Okay, so in the game continuation, it just ended very quickly with um, king f8. A mate in two is actually forced now. Forced mate in two, check, and then the beautiful knight g8, which is an unusual type of mate. Um, so, wow! Congratulations to Wesley. So, and maybe you know, good luck today. Good luck to also to Garwin Jones, who's on board two today. Uh, he'll be playing Girish, uh, Annie Girish. Um, Wesley So will be playing today. Aljanov, Pavel Aljanov, two six seven eight. So, the Reykjavik Open last round today. They've got a very good website. Maybe worth checking out the games live. They got DGT, as most tournaments nowadays. So that would be very interesting to see the top boards there. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.